Stretching across 1,000 miles, the border between Sweden and Norway is the largest frontier of the EU, and Svinnesund Bridge is by far the busiest crossing. It's said to be the most technologically advanced border in the world, and is a model for the frictionless customs border between Northern and Southern Ireland that politicians so desperately want. An example of how that might be done, the committee might look at uh, the Norway-Sweden border, where you have, they're both in the single market, but they, they straddle a customs union, and it's a very open border. But just how frictionless is it? What do you think about the customs here? I think it's uh, completely shit. It takes a long time, it's not necessary. And what does it mean for the areas around the border? We have a lot of people employed uh, taking care of the administration uh, made up by the, this border, of course. So it's an industry of bureaucracy? Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. In 1995, Sweden joined the EU, but Norway didn't. And although Norway is in Schengen and the single market, it's not in the customs union. And that means different laws and taxes on different imports and exports with inevitable problems. There's no import tax on garlic in Norway, but there is import tax on garlic in the EU. So if I was in Norway and I decided I wanted to buy some garlic, and then I walked over that bridge without declaring it and tried to sell it in Sweden, I'd be breaking the law. The garlic example sounds ridiculous, but garlic smuggling actually happens. In 2013, international arrest warrants were placed on two British men for smuggling eight million pounds of Chinese garlic into the EU via Norway. And so, customs checks have to take place between Norway and Sweden. And we will scan the cars. Venka and Christine are head of customs on the Norwegian side of the border. So this lorry is a Polish lorry? This is a Polish lorry, yes, and that's you're kind right. you're interested in what's inside it? Yes, uh, he has declared some goods. We have the paper for it and now we have to look uh, if there is uh, See something what's actually else. actually in there. Yes. As I can see, it's only doors and windows on the trailer, so I can't see anything other than what he has declared. It's quite a lot of work to, to find out what's in all of these lorries. Yes, yes but is. this uh, scanner helps us uh, a lot. Not all the lorries are scanned, but of those that do, not everyone behaves themselves. Yes, this is uh, all the things. Uh, Alcohol and cigarettes are considerably cheaper in Sweden and taxes are lower on things like textiles. And so if you haven't declared them, they get confiscated. Norway and Sweden collaborate closely and the customs process is almost completely automated. You can even download an app so that you can declare your goods on your phone. But truckers still have to stop for between 5 and 10 minutes and much longer if there are queues. Some truckers are fine with that. What do you think about the customs process here? It's not a problem for me. I'm from Sweden. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's naturally. It's fine. And others are less enthusiastic. The people here say it takes about 10 minutes. Oh, no, that's not correct. If you have been come here on a Sunday evening, then you first have to wait two hours to come into the place here. So we can tell you, so the queue takes a long time to get yes. to it. The local town of Stromstad's mayor says they've tried to prioritise problem solving. We still have a list that we are still uh, picking and, and uh, try, trying to say, well, this year we managed to, to uh, get rid of two or three more of them. When we first joined the, the European Union, uh, the, the ambulance in, in Sweden uh, had to go via the custom control in Norway and uh, they were supposed to pay for uh, different uh, drugs and uh, equipment they had in the ambulance and they will have the money back when they returned but carrying a, a sick person it wasn't possible to go via the custom control um, that was an, an easy thing to solve because everyone it was obvious to everyone that you can't have it like that 
But there's one key detail that makes this border so attractive to British politicians that a bridge just down the river from the Svenison crossing helpfully illustrates. You may notice something different on this bridge between Sweden, which is just over there, and Norway behind me. And that's that there aren't any trucks or lorries on it. And that's for a reason. There are 10 customs checks between Norway and Sweden, and traders have to use these routes. Other crossings don't have customs checks and are monitored by cameras. Last week, Newsnight's David Grossman illustrated the soft border Ireland currently has. Want to see how soft this border is right now? That van is in the Republic, now it's in the UK. The only hint, it's gone from one country to another. The speed limit signs go from metric to imperial. If the UK were to emulate the Swedish-Norwegian model for a normal punter who's not in the import-export business, well, they really won't notice much of a difference. But for truckers, it's a different story. There is hope for a truly frictionless border though. Sweden and Norway plan to test out a pilot next year using number plate recognition to automatically approve some vehicles. Can it be done technically? Is there, a, is there, a, is there yeah. something that can scan the yeah. lorries? Yeah, they, they can scan the lorries and, and the registration plate. And that technology exists? Yeah, te the technology is there already. But well, it's, well, not, it's not implemented, it's not uh, inst installed. And to implement this technology, Martin says, means changing legislation, which Norway, Sweden and the EU needs to approve. Not an easy task. David Davis is right to say that the Swedish-Norwegian border is something to look at. But is it frictionless? Well, not quite. <laughs>